Classical Utilities Commission Special Call Meeting, <coughs> June the 25th, 2015. Roll Call, Tim Spencer. Here. Mike Smith. Here. And L.B. Lester here. First item on the agenda after the roll call is we're going to have a presentation consideration for the property and uh, casual insurance, uh, casualty insurance proposals. And the first uh, presentation <coughs> will be by David Livingston. Absolutely. Me, mm -hmm. Jeremy Blair. And uh, filling in for David will be. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you said David was first. <laughs> Jeremy, I'm sorry. Jeremy's first. Yeah, I'm first. I'm first. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I am Jeremy Blair. Some of y'all probably you got your copy. Here you go. Oh, sorry, Mike. Stop it for you. Thank you. Uh, guys, uh, basically, the reason I'm here today is to present this proposal. I wanted to give you a little bit of a backdrop on myself. Uh, first and foremost, um, I'm from Painesville. Know a lot of you. Graduated from Painesville High School in 91. The reason I'm bringing this up is because when I was presenting on the city, it was kind of a big deal if you're local or not. So I still very much consider myself local. I stay out Blaine every Tuesday night and hear about eight business days a, a month. So I am here. Um, the agency that I work for is Assured Needs Lukens. Uh, we are the number one revenue producing insurance agency in the state. And we're also the 13th largest brokerage in the country. Uh, the reason I bring that up is, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I've got a backing of the best insurance agency in the state and some of the best markets in the country. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to, uh, I guess, we'll, we'll, we'll dive right into it. If you want to go to page 28, I know I don't want to take up much of your time, and we're dealing with price here. So uh, on page 28, you kind of see a breakdown of what we got. Travelers was the company that came in for us that, that gave us the quote. Uh, don't want you to think that that's all I did, but we were... Turned down by Wright Insurance, Selective Insurance, Chubb, and Liberty Mutual due to the gas exposure. You guys are familiar with that. You've, you've heard it before. Uh, we did get a quote from Kimmy on the work comp, but they were also a little bit higher than uh, Travelers. So the reason we're presenting the Travelers quote is because this is the best economics with comparable coverages. Uh, the bottom line comes out to be $134,087. There is a footnote to that. Um, there's a coverage that you guys have right now through KLC that's for cyber liability. Uh, to be honest with you, we got behind the gun on this. It took us a long time to, to quote uh, a municipally owned uh, utilities company. It was just, there was a lot that went into it. We got down to the last second. I literally got the quote yesterday found out that the cyber liability was not included on there and they've come back and they've given us coverage options for that That's in, that will be on top of the 134,000. Uh, basically, and I would probably get with Bob just to determine how much coverage you need, so I'll give you a range of what it's gonna be if we go with the minimal cyber coverage of 25,000. It's gonna add an additional $575. If we go all the way up to the $1 million in cyber with $250,000 in breach notification, basically that $250,000, if something were to happen and you lost files or something got hacked, you're responsible to notify the people that were involved in this. That $250,000 in breach notification would be what covers that. Then you would have the $1 million in cyber liability as well. If we add that on, that's going to roughly cost around $3,000. So we're anywhere, depending on the minimal coverage that you add, to the maximum <laughs> amount, probably around $3,000. There is an additional app that I have to get Bob to help me fill out, just answer some questions about the website and things like that. So when you look at that, if you're looking at $134,082, pretty much we add about the most we're going to add, which is around $3,000. So just tack that onto there, and that's where the premium is going to sit for that. Um, one of the things that I did want to touch on um, that I just in my dealings with Bob um, is the fact that, you know, right now you guys are with Kentucky League of Cities. Okay. I kind of spoke with uh, 
a little bit earlier before Mike got here about this situation. Kentucky League of Cities, you know, hey, we, we write policies with them, not going to lie, but they're an accessible fund. Uh, basically what that means is that at any point that they decide that they've taken too many losses, they can come back to their members, which you guys are a member, and they can put an assessment on that. Uh, I'll give you, for instance, it's kind of a similar situation. Kisbit was the, the self-insured fund that did a lot of the school systems a few years ago. They went under. I can tell you this, at the time that they went under, they were managed by Kentucky League of Cities since 2009. When they went under, I think they had an assessment that was around $50 million. For instance, Paintsville Independent, who was with them at the time, got an assessment for $260,000. So you see, that's a bill that you can get that you have no idea how to prepare for that and you don't know when it's going to happen. Um, the, the good thing about coming to a company like Travelers, obviously everybody's familiar with them. We know their financials. We know how big they are. They're a great company and it's not accessible, so you're never gonna run into a situation where at the very, you know, very wrong moment, they send you a big bill and you're responsible for paying it. Um, that was something I did for the city. I don't know if you guys know, it, but I just recently took over the insurance for the city a couple of weeks ago. We were able on their package to move them to a non-accessible company and, and there were some savings there as well. So it was a big benefit to the city. Um, I can say this, if you guys give me the opportunity, uh, I will manage your claims. We also have our own claims department with the Sheridan East Lukens. We go through and we hire former adjusters for these big companies, some attorneys, some things like that, where, and, and you do have a dedicated claims rep. So in a situation where you run into, like last year with KLC, <coughs> where you turn in water backup claims and you're admitting to negligence and they turn it down you know you see a lot of agents and agencies come in and say hey that's just the way it is they're turning it down whereas with us we've got a claims department we would get our dog in on that fight and a lot of times you see the companies turn around skip and fetch when they realize they're probably going to have a lawsuit on their hands. so it's something that we also bring to the table uh, other than that, I would just say that we will manage this policy it would be my job to year after year bring you competitive bids it's not a situation where if you switch to me this year, you can't get a KLC quote next year. I plan on doing that, bringing them back to the table. I can say this too, if you guys choose to go with KLC and you decide to stay there, I, our agency and myself would be willing to take a BOR on that. You could sign me over a, of a broker of record. I will tell you this, for the first year, if you decide to stay with KLC and you appoint me the BOR, I will work for free. I will not get paid on that. Your current agent will get paid on that. And the only reason I'd be willing to do that is for future, you know, I, I'd love to be your agent and just prove to you that I'm going to do what I can to bring <clears throat> competitive quotes to the table and manage your insurance better than it's been ba managed right now. Explain that a little bit more on how your, your company would be a dedicated claims adjuster. Us. Basically, we what we extra for that, Jeremy? you're getting that. So what you're paying right now, okay? That's I I, I can't I, I can tell you, Elite's going to have a customer service rep. They're going to sit there and say, "Hey, we got a claims person." No, we actually have a dedicated claims department. So that is something you're not paying us any extra to have that. That's just a, a perk of being with the number one producing agency in the state. We're going to do things like that that bring in your all's business. Uh, I'm pretty sure, and uh, let me find the page right here, they should have the name of your claims rep in here. And it is Karen Williams. If you look on page three, uh, you can see that Karen Williams is listed as your claims representative. Jennifer Nickerson is a, a lady in my office and she's kind of the CSR. Now, I don't want you to think that once I write this business, you're never gonna be able to get a hold of me in all actuality. Bob and I text and talk on cell phones all the time. So I'm available 24 seven. If you call me at three o'clock in the morning, I may not answer, but then again, I may because it's probably something bad and I hate to put bad stuff off in the morning. Uh, so Jennifer will be your account executive. She'll handle that out of our office. Karen Williams, um, I, be honest with you, I'm not really sure what office. I think she's out of our Louisville office. So she is, it, like I said, it's something that you get a little bit extra that you don't find at a lot of other agencies. and. I, I kind of told you guys a little bit earlier before everybody else came into the room. I'll give you a for instance situation. West Liberty Schools was a school that we insured. 
when the tornadoes came through, tornadoes destroyed a building. The building wasn't up to code when the building got destroyed, so the company came back and said, we'll replace the building, we won't replace it up to code, you guys are responsible for this. We got our claims department involved in it once they realized that we were basically going to push this thing to get sued. That's when you see the company start skipping and fetching back saying, oh, all of a sudden, yeah, that's fine. We'll replace it up to code and you move on. Uh, I can't guarantee that that happens on every claim or something like that, but it is an added benefit that you get because these people that are in our claims department were former adjusters and they're also former, some of them are former attorneys. So it's not like you never want me to go in, you know, I'm an agent and I'm good at what I do and I know claims, but when I get somebody who's a former adjuster on my side, they can go in and actually argue points that maybe I'm not aware of. It's just an added bonus. It's something that you get for the premium. One of the things I will say is a lot of people think that an agent's out there to just bring you quotes. You try to bring competitive quotes and once they write the deal, that's what their job is. In all actuality, my job does not start until you guys hire me. And at that point, that is when we go in and I will do quarterly re reviews with Bob. I will come here to your all's meeting. We'll go over everything, especially on work comp. And I'll give you a, a for instance on this too. You guys have done a, it, and I'll give Bob kudos and the supervisors. Your guys work comp is pretty good. For a utilities company, to know the type of work that you all do, you've got a pretty good lower mod. Uh, but now, one of the agent's job is, and I'll tell you, this is something I did for the city of Paintsville. A mod is promulgated every year, usually at the beginning of the year, and this kind of takes in claim situations, how much money you have in reserve and how much money these claims actually paid out. One of the things I did for the city is I got in, we got a quote, I started looking at it, and I was like, well, they've got a claim that went into their modification back in, Dece or back in February. The claim actually closed, which was twelve thousand dollars cheaper than they had reserved i go do a new erm and all of a sudden i'm going to be able to probably go back to paints in the next two weeks after i've already given them a rate and say i think we're going to be able to lower your model we're going to save an extra two or three thousand dollars just for doing that it's whether or not your agent's going to do this work and do it you know their current agent could have done it i'll tell you this right now your current agent could have brought travelers to the table they didn't even bother to quote it so you know that's one of the things that I want to make sure if you guys do decide to hire me that you understand that you're getting what you paid for and it's not just me bringing a quote to the table and saying that's the price and I'm done. That's when the job starts. So I know I've taken up too much of the time and Bob's... Yeah, a question for you. Yeah. The, uh, the amount here that they've got for the quote, uh, 134000 mm -hmm. is that a one-time fee we pay or is it a monthly broken down? They they have they'll have payment options sure. It's so before payment. as before I think you were going and you know what I'm not sure if they put the payment options in here. Let me see. Is there any interest factor in this thing? Not with travelers. So it's not like something that a lot of times maybe with and this comes into talking about non admitted carriers and things like that. You'll see this. They'll they'll send you through a finance company or you go to you know citizens over here and get any <coughs> either way you look at it you're paying interest on it. So. Travelers is going to offer a payment plan, and uh, you know what? Let's see if it's in. Well, I just know, like some insurance companies, you can do a, a payment plan, but then it's like they throw a surcharge on for every time you do that. You know, and it's not going to be an interest. It's not going to be an interest charge. What they would do is, is sometimes you will see like a ten dollar fee go on there just for processing the, right. the payment. So it's not going to be an interest at all. It's going to be in. And they, for some reason, they didn't put it in here, but I know that they do offer a payment plan. I think it was probably a seven pay. So I would have to get those numbers and exactly what the deposits were going to be. The work comp, on the other hand, probably would be, they would probably take that all up front, the 38000 Then the package would be on a payment plan. So I don't want to misconstrue that. <coughs> Just make sure Bob gets all the information. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and like I said, it, it, there won't be a finance fee or anything like that. So... You know, when I was talking with Paintsville about that, I always tried to make that a big point. They didn't really care that much. I was like, well, here, there's an extra, because I don't know what citizens were charging you in the past, if that's how you went. So I'm sure they're probably charging you 25 to 3% on that. So it is a little bit more savings, you know. Is it something that's going to, you know, help out tremendously? No, but it's it, it's economic savings there as well. A couple of clarifications. Yes. Uh, who did you put the city with? I put the city with Wright Specialty Insurance. They were a company that declined this exposure because of the gas. Now, I'll be honest with you. 
this will be part of my job. And one of the things that you got to think is once, if you do decide to hire me and I get control of the product, it's going to be easier for me next year to remarket than it was coming from an outside looking in. So that being said, it would be what my thoughts are is to next year try to convince Selective and Wright to give proposals on this. You think, well, it's set in stone, they're turning it down this year. That has nothing to do with next year and something changes. So we would pretty much bring every player back to the table at that point just to see who competes. And then that would be my job, to bring it back to you guys. This, this, and this, you guys pick. You know, This is what I think is the best, but you guys you know, will go through and see which one you think is the best. Because ultimately, you're the one purchasing it. Has this got all of our equipment listed? It does. It's, well, and that's another thing, too, because – I'm going to have to get with Bob. I went off what was on your current policy. Now, I think at some point, Bob said... Yeah, we're, we're, we're looking at that. There might be some things we need to add. So there's going to be... There's going to, yeah, regardless of whoever it's with. So there is going to be some I's that need to be dotted and some T's that need to be crossed, and that, that's for sure. You got the back truck on there? Yep. The back truck I did put on there last week. Yeah, and also, when, when we're looking at the, the premium dollars... The other proposals, including KLC, do include that cyber coverage. Yeah, they do. They do. So it's not yeah. like so. Well, really, the, the 137 is the, is yeah. the relevant number, right, to, for comparative purposes. Well, how big a Bob, in your estimation, how big a deal is the accessible funds versus the non-accessible? Well, I understand what Jeremy's saying, but I don't know. Uh, I, I don't know KLC's. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what. It, well, it's mostly, it's, it's, it, into play or not. it's no big deal unless it comes into play, and if it does, it could be huge. Yeah. I, I don't know. That. What's KLC's? What's their premium? What's their quote? The 145 703. For the same coverage? Essentially, yes. What do you mean, essentially? Well, you're always going to have little, little difference. You know, so, so, what's the difference? What's the difference? Well, your, your, your limits are the same. Uh, well, your, your liabilities handle a little differently. Yeah, we're going to have an umbrella, whereas KLC put uh, you know, a, a strict amount. So we have a $2 million umbrella that comes in over basically to get you out of that liability amount. And having an umbrella versus one set limit is going to be a little bit better too. So how much is the umbrella? How much in premium? How much the is coverage? the liability coverage? $2 million. And the, the primary coverage, the liability limits are what? $2 million. So, so it's potentially $4 million? Not potentially, it is. And the, the coverage that's uh, basically what generally is officers and directors liability is on here too, right? The yes, board it's, members it's, are it's, covered it's, it's personally? Just, it's just called something different. It's called public entity management. Different companies are going to name it differently to try to make their sound better. Than is, is Travelers the umbrella carrier as well? Yes, they are. Travelers is everything on it. So KLC was 145, and we're basically at 137 with Travelers, with the addition of the cyber liability. Yes, correct. And one other so thing, 145 I, I, includes the cyber. Yes. Liability. So 137, if we do the cyber liability with Travelers, 137. And 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 not trying to. That's. That's a rough. They're, they're telling me we got to fill out this app, so it's going to come in there within a couple hundred dollars of whatever we say. So I don't, I'm not going to come back and say it's 10 grand, but you know, it, give them a chance to rate it, and it's always going to come out a couple hundred dollars within where they tell me they're going to get if they can do it. And it may be lower. So I, you know, it's just that's, that's the range they're giving me. I will say this also, and, and this isn't really, and this is something that I just came into in this situation, and one thing that needs to be asked to the next guy that presents, is there is a state statute that states that if you have an admitted carrier versus a non-admitted carrier, that you have to accept the admitted carrier. It sounds like Scottsdale, I know for a fact, Scottsdale has some things that they write on paper that's non-admitted, so that needs to probably be a question that's addressed that, to, to move forward on that. KLC, when I, when I called the head of the KLC just a minute ago, he's saying that they are admitted, so we could accept that BOR if you decide to stick with KLC, if you wanted to move move it to us and have us. Remember that again. 
<laughs> the, basically, they're, when you're an admitted carrier, you're admitted to the state of Kentucky, and, and Kentucky recognizes that carrier as being an admitted carrier. Uh, sometimes you have companies that are not admitted, so a lot of times in that situation, it's it's in how they're used. And because Bob asked a question, well, why why does anybody why does a company get into this not admitted? Well, it's a situation I was looking at a city. I'm looking at a city right now. They're with Scottsdale. So immediately when I saw that, I was like, they've had really bad claims at some point because they couldn't get any quotes from an admitted carrier, so they had to go to the non-admitted carrier. So basically, a non-admitted carrier is going to be somebody that's... And it may just be that the exposure... I'm not trying to say anything bad about it other than if it's not admitted. If you had apples to apples and you were comparing everything, you would want to go with the admitted carrier every time. Uh, but uh, it, it may be a situation where the reason that they looked at it was because of the gas exposure. You know, maybe that was something that was a little non-standard to them, so that was the market that they had because of that gas exposure. I don't know if Scottsdale writes coverage in Kentucky. Oh no, they do. They do. It's just that, and, and like I said, I call them to make sure every year. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying some of the paper that they write it on. I think that he even asked the agent, and he said maybe he said some of it might be on not admitted paper. So it's just something to know going forward. We're kind of in a time crunch where you're trying to figure out whether or not it's legal or not because it is a state law that states that. There are uh, some exemptions, and that's something I don't have the law memorized, but it's usually like you know a municipality of 50,000 people or more, you've got 50 million in revenue for their an exemption. But I would think in this situation, and I, I don't, like I said, I'm not totally, but when you have an admitted carrier like Travelers going up against a Scottsdale, I'm, and if it's on not admitted paper, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you would have to choose the admitted carrier. Uh, when I so this kind of came about right when we first got here. So I called. It's funny to ask these questions. I called KLC, the head of their insurance department. I said, "Are you guys an admitted carrier in Kentucky?" He said, "I don't really know what you're talking about." I was like, "What?" <laughs> so he said. Then after I talked to him, he said, "Yeah, yeah, Jeremy, we're an admitted carrier." So he kind of understood after a second. But so. What kind of stuff you get? <laughs> Anything else, guys? <clears throat> no, nothing I think of. No. Jeremy, we certainly appreciate you. Hey, I appreciate you all. Thank you much, Bob. Hey, and I will say this: you already know it. This guy's pretty good at what he does because having the two roles. I just want to give him a little bit of kudos because I did call him a lot. I sent him a lot of applications. I asked him a lot of questions, and. You know, I'll just be honest with you. A lot of times in this business, it's hard to find people that will get to you timely and answer the questions. And he was available pretty much every time and answer all the questions. So just want to give him a little bit of kudos. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Well, Bob, you want me to hang around or? Uh, it's up to you. Okay. I would send David in, please. Yep. I will say that both of these guys have worked extremely hard to get this done. See ya. Take care. What are your uh, opinions on uh, your Dean Blair? Mm -hmm. You were Dean at mine? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, I don't see Kathy whatever. She's still yeah, there. This is Blake's presentation. Mm -hmm. She can be a little bit of a Where do you want to sit? Or stand. Just get where you want to stand. Okay. Okay, if you pass those on the way Okay, they are good to go. All right, my name is David Livingston. I'm with um, Roading Insurance out of Lexington. I'm with the Public Entity Division. Uh, in our public entity division, all we work with are governmental entities, uh, cities, counties, water districts, utility districts, um, school districts, and a lot of public, other public uh, political subdivisions. Um, we're the largest rider of governmental entities in the state. We work with over 500 clients that are governmental entities, such as yourself. Um, as far as 
water districts and utility districts that we work with. We work with Webster County Water. We work with Winchester Municipal. We work with uh, Georgetown, uh, Owensboro, Edmondson, Prestonsburg, um, I think there's any, uh, Mount Sterling. We just wrote Mount Sterling for uh, the upcoming year for 2014-15. And most of those that we have uh, are placed with um, Scottsdale, which is who we have provided as a proposal for you. That's a little bit about me and, and our company, what we do. I was just going to ask if you all had any questions regarding the proposal. Um, I will tell you, we were kind of, I think we made contact. I don't, do they know the story of, okay. I, I found out about the opportunity to propose about two and a half weeks ago. So we've worked very hard, fast, and furious to, to get a proposal put together that either uh, is very similar to your KLC expiring proposal or uh, policy. It's not going to be exactly because KLC does their policies a little different. We write a, a lot of companies we, or a lot of business, a lot of entities with KLC, but their, their policy limits are a little bit different than, than the norm. So, um, but I kind of put a comparison together of our two proposals versus your current KLC and the coverages. And if you all are wanting to ask any questions about it, I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. But why don't you kind of go over the coverages and, and, and the, okay. the differences okay. in your two proposals? Yes. Sure. Um, or you know what, I've got my copy here. Sure. Uh, one of the first things that um, we, your current uh, property values, we have them at three, 33361000 KLC on their policies going into the new year have uh, been taking a 2% increase on property values due to uh, replacement cost increase on those. Um, if you go down, our deductible is $1,000, same as KLC. The earthquake limits, their $50 million is a shared limit among all their members. So if there's an earthquake in this area, anyone that's written with KLC shares in that limit. So that's, a, that's kind of a pooled limit among all their members. Uh, if there was a, a situation in Western Kentucky and Eastern Kentucky, it would be shared all across the members of KLC that are written by them. So we have five million in earthquake. Uh, flood for them is the same. It's a shared limit among their members. We have a million uh, specifically for you. Our deductible is a little lower on the flood. They are 25,000 where we're 10. Uh, contractors equipment, uh, equipment breakdown, they have 50 million. Again, this is a shared limit among the members and um, ours is included in the building limit. You have the 33 million that's included in there. Um, extra expense, we have 250,000, they have 2 million. The extra expense would be if, um, if you had a situation where you had a loss and you had to bring in another uh, piece of equipment to carry you through until your loss is, is uh, mitigated and you're back up and running, that's what that would cost or would cover. Terrorism is included in it. Um, we also included crime in our policy because it's a small amount of money and I don't think you have that with KLC. I think you have a separate policy for that. It's only about $400, so we decided to leave it in our, in our proposal. Um, the liability, it is on the back page. It's a million dollars. You go to the very, very back. Um, the liability coverage, I'm sorry, next to the last tab. It'll show you what our limits are. I'm not sure how KLC's policy falls out because it's a it's kind of a new one for them and, and I'm not completely sure on their limits that they've got in place yet. But you'll see for the privacy breach a million, each security breach a million. Um, and the retention is, is ten thousand dollars, which a retention is a deductible for each loss. Um, Back to the front page, general liability. This is where we differ from KLC and any other company differs from KLC. KLC does a $3 million limit. Uh, Scottsdale, any other company that you work with, they'll do a $1 million and then also an umbrella. Our umbrella is at the bottom. It's a $2 million limit, which gets you to your $3 million limit to match KLC. Fire legal liabilities 
half million dollars unless you rent properties from others uh, you usually wouldn't have an issue with this this is if you go in and have an event or, or rent space and you're negligent on something and a fire occurs that helps pay for that KLC has a deductible on your general liability of five thousand dollars we quoted it two different ways the middle column is a $2,500 deductible then we also quoted it on the next column over to the right with a zero dollar deductible also did the same thing on uh, sewer backup uh, sewer backup with KLC is a hundred thousand ours is included in our general liability limits so you have more coverage for sewer backup of course sewer backup is if you're negligent in the claim if it's lack of care or lack of maintenance by someone's home um, then obviously your policy is not going to respond because you wouldn't be negligent in that. Why have you got two? Over well, the reason I've got two is because of those deductibles. We did a $2,500 deductible and then we went ahead and did one with a $0 deductible. Because normally when, when we propose um, a policy, we don't put a deductible on general liability. And there's also a deductible on your automobile liability which is unusual. We don't ever put a deductible on the auto liability unless the, the account is really bad. And you guys are a pretty good account, so there's, there's no need to put a liability up or a deductible on it. That's where I get confused. You showed one is a $2,500 deductible and the other is a zero. So are we Correct. Right. This, we, we submitted two different proposals. This is one proposal and this is the other proposal. This proposal has $2,500 deductibles. Okay. Correct. Okay. Yes, sir. It's a little bit cheaper if you take deductibles, but yeah. and one of those is to make it comparable to KLC, and one is to build on the bill. So if you look down, same on the automobile, the liability, we have a million dollars, but we have the two million dollar umbrella, so that gets you the three on that. Uh, we have PIP at fifty thousand. Your current PIP is ten. I'm not sure if you all are familiar with PIP, which would be a passenger in a vehicle. It would be somebody that doesn't work for you. If they work for you, they would fall under work comp. But if it's somebody that doesn't work for you, um, that's in the vehicle and you have an accident, then, then PIP would come into play to help pay some of the medical bills for that person. Uh, public officials, uh, same thing. We have a million dollars with the with the two million dollar umbrella, and then you see the umbrella at the bottom, and then you see both of our premiums down there at the bottom as well. <coughs> and I do have one other thing that I got probably 10 minutes I got a, a text message before we started like I said we we finally got all our proposals in by about seven last night and we were still tweaking some things and I had asked for some concessions on the proposal and the entire proposal is on admitted paper they first quoted the public officials liability on non admitted paper um, I would prefer you to be on admitted paper. That just means that it falls under more scrutiny with the Department of Insurance and that you all it falls into the guarantee insurance fund set up by the state. So the entire proposal is on admitted paper. <coughs> um, the last tab, it, these next few tabs, the first few tabs are just the actual quote proposals that, are, that uh, we were sent. And then the last tab, is the work comp. Uh, the work comp that we quoted you through is called Sagamore. Uh, they are an A plus rated company and very sound financially and their proposal came in at $27,070 from the work comp. <coughs> Any so questions? The total Annual cost is ninety-seven thousand. Then total. No, that's for the package for the property liability auto. And then, and then the, the work comp is twenty-seven thousand seventy dollars. Twenty-seven seventy. Twenty-seven thousand seventy. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Does your company? Uh, do they have a dedicated claims adjuster that will, something happens with Scottsdale that at least we, we want to take a better look at it? We say, do we, we say we may be uh, responsible and the 
do we have a claims liaison basically that would come out and, and help you if you want to fight the claim and yes we do yes we also have full-time loss control we can come out we can do driver training is that extra no sir we can do mock OSHA inspections um, we can do uh, hazardous material training we can also do drug-free workplace training um, We've got a whole whole host of lists. We have a full time loss control director and assistant in the office that uh, provides loss control on all of our accounts. Our loss control director, he's got a graduate degree from Eastern in risk management and has been in the business of over twenty years. That's specifically what he does, his loss control. Mm -hmm. Another thing that, that uh, I was going to mention, too, as, as you all go through, if, if you're doing updates to your employee handbook, if there are, if you have questions regarding um, how to handle drivers as far as points and at what point do they lose their opportunity to drive or lose their opportunity to have employment, mm -hmm. we actually have different... Um, policies and procedures that are set up that we can share with you that the attorney can review to put into your your employee manual if you ever need that we do contract review so that when you're getting ready to do a project or have any kind of subcontractors or contractors work for you we'll look through their information to verify that they have the, the limits that we would recommend for you to have and that they meet your bid specifications as requested. If I added that right, the total <coughs> package cost is $124,808. Yeah, we were kind of dollar, kind of around the pennies. Uh, and that's with the no, no deductible. $124,808. Yeah. Okay. This is a claims made policy. Uh, the, the, well, that's one thing I don't know on your pub, on your um, KLC if it's a claims made policy. Um, the public officials, it was claims made? It's current. It's current policy, okay. Uh, our public officials, I do believe the public officials is claims made, correct. Yes, public officials is claims made. Well, what about the rest of the coverage? Is Pardon it, me? General liability, is it claims made? No, it's an occurrence policy. Well then if, if we have a, a if we have a claim that's made against us as a result of uh, an incident that we don't know about mm -hmm. that occurs during this uh, League of Cities policy, then we don't have any coverage, right? No, theirs is an occurrence basis, so it would go back to the KLC that year. is not a claims made policy. No. No. They they do occurrence and claims made. That's I wasn't sure if yours was occurrence or claims made, so Ours is not a claims. KLC is not a claims made. Her email exchange I had with them, it's a currency. The reason I say that is because the Travelers is a claims made policy. I mean, yeah, ours is claim, the, yeah, ours is claims made as well on the public officials. Wait, go, your, go your, your, wait, wait, wait. Your policy is claims made on claims against the board members individually, correct? Correct, on public officials, yes. Okay, so that if a claim is made uh, next week or next month or six months from now over something that allegedly occurred prior to the time the policy is enforced, it would pick up and defend and pay for a claim, right? It would, it would all, well, claims questions are very difficult to answer because you never have all the, the scenarios and it's always what if. So what the answer I'm gonna tell you is, after reviewing it, it would either be picked up under ours or it would be picked up under KLC's because they have an occurrence policy. And if the occurrence if it is determined to happen in a 2014-15 year or a 2013-14 year, then that's who would respond to it, not Well, yeah, Scott's I'm just trying to find KLC's uh, policy involving officers and directors coverage is an occurrence policy. True or false? What I was told by right. KLC. That's occurrence. Okay. okay. All right, fine. All right. Most other companies are claims made on their directors and officers kind of coverage. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to use the same question I gave the other guy. 
Yes, sir. Is this, uh, once the policy is chosen, is that amount due at full at the time the policy is written, or is it something that can be paid monthly or bi-monthly? Ours in that manner is similar to KLC. You can pay it in full or you can do premium finance. Oh, premium finance. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Same way with KLC. You, you can... You finance the premium. I know or, nothing about KLC. Okay. So. You, you, well, it's what you all do now. You can either finance the premium or you can pay it in full. They're on Sagamore, on the work comp, you do have different options as far as payments. With Scottsdale, it's paid in full or you finance the premium. Typical I can't think of it. Is there an interest payment then on that? To come there up? is. There is. Yeah. Okay. Just for a question, we have them pay it in full. Okay. And... The majority of public entities do pay in full. <clears throat> Any other questions? No. We appreciate that. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you. Um, hang around. Head out of town. Uh, up to you. Okay. Same, same thing we told the chair. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you hang around or not. So we're going to have an executive session today. Off -off. Yes. Yeah. So that's true. We may, it may be a while. Maybe, so. Okay. And if he's still out there, we might let him know that. It's just okay. Good. I'll tell him. Thank you all. Thanks, okay. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the. Uh, we need to take action. I think we probably discussed it. In we probably session. shouldn't. Well, I don't think we should, do you? Mm -hmm. I think we have to discuss the insurance. Okay. You want to keep it on the table then? All right. Floor is open for discussion on the insurance. Well, Bob, I guess since this was given, I guess, to you initially, going through what you've seen, do you see any differences in the coverages of these two companies compared to who we currently have? No. If anything, it's probably a little better. Uh, now, in all honesty, I've, I've not had the opportunity to fully look through this Travelers because when you all came this morning, he was just getting here, and, and so I haven't had a better chance to look at the uh, uh, Scottsdale. Personally, of course, I, I think Travelers is an awful company myself. <laughs> I do nothing against the agent, but I wouldn't insure with travelers. Agency wise, no, uh, I feel very good about both of these guys, yeah. individually and agency wise. But yeah, I got nothing against the agent. I just, I just have a, I just don't think travelers, travelers, used to be called years ago the Cadillac of insurance companies. And now, I mean, th their their claims handling and adjusting is virtually non-existent. So, I mean, they may or may not, you know, I, but, and I don't know much about <coughs> Scottsdale I've seen over time, uh, but I haven't seen or been involved with them or anything with, with, lately, with the last five or six, seven years, so I don't know. The relationship I have with individuals in Prestonsburg, I, I did make a call to see how claims were handled, and I said extremely well. Scottsdale? Yes. Percent. Well, they yeah. used to be. I yeah, don't know the, about the, now. But the, the claims you actually you, you filed them through the roading agency, and they yeah. represent you through the process. Well, roading used to do. I don't know if they still do Johnson County, but they used to do a lot of school board work too. They, they, so uh, they do public entity work. They do Johnson County, but uh, through, yeah. they, 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 with Keiko. Yeah. So basically, then we've got <coughs> our current policy. They've quoted roughly one hundred forty-five thousand. And uh, Jeremy's was would be one hundred thirty-seven thousand, and David's is one hundred twenty-four thousand, or one hundred twenty-five. One hundred twenty-five. Mm -hmm. And actually, looking at a different deductible situation there, we pulled the deductibles back down to lower numbers, and and, and that that not that quote, that was the higher of his two quotes. Yeah, without the deductible. Right. Like well, on, the li on the liability side, yeah. still have it on property. <coughs> so on, this is mainly covering our personal property damages or claims against us. This is not hospitalization. It's a hospital right. bond. Right. 
property and casualty insurance. Well, the chair will entertain a motion if anyone has one. Well, I move we purchase the insurance for next year from the Scottsdale policy. That's it's all. A, it's uh, roading. <laughs> roading insurance. I second it. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Ayes have it. So we will go with Scottsdale. He's still out there, you can tell. Okay. He's got it wrong. Somebody's gonna leave this. Well, make sure we, <laughs> we get that situation, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, I you well, well, I'm in a case now. I'm in an EQT case, and they've got a, an issue with a pipeline contractor, and it was a difference in the claims made policy, and so. And you get, you know, all of a sudden you find out that I've got a gap here, and uh, and there's a problem. <laughs> you didn't know. They both they disappeared. Okay. Uh, so <coughs> come back for. Are we ready to go for the next item? We're going to discuss the budget for fiscal year uh, 16. I'll have my proposal. Some of you should have. It's my, my first question is how you want to proceed with this. Just I've done about what? Item line by item, or address any questions you have. Or. Well, how have y'all handled this usually in the past? On this, my first time. For this. It's been done different ways. Uh, this is actually my third time. Uh, two years ago, we went item by item. Last year, we asked any questions and. What about? Eight months ago, we was advised that we was going to be in the black, and now we're going to run into the red. That don't make any sense. Uh, no, we're in the black. The, so uh, I'm talking about for this year, the, but the, the cash flow? Yeah. Well, that just changed a bit. And you factor in the, the difference in what just happened on, on the insurance and the two trucks we've ordered that are being carried over from last year's budget that are included in this. It's just about back to even. And you were quoting 153 for next year's and now we pretty much said 125. No, you really need to uh, increase that a little bit to allow for additions. I would put that in at 128.1. And, and there'll be some of the the difference there too is is things have been included in the capital budget that I've become aware of in the last few months that I just had no knowledge of. You gave us the listing on all the capital proposals, and this is what everyone is asking to be purchased for each that's division. The larger, that's the larger things, yeah. And, and we're getting the pump and, and lift station things, those are just kind of generalities, kind of what we've experienced the last year or so with all these replacements. And there's some of these things on, on the, the water side on the capital, I actually asked them to be here in case you had any questions on what the need was for some of those items, like the excavator or the, the spin doctor. I thought we had an excavator. We've got two. So they were looking at trying to get a smaller, more compact one, the easier access for getting it to the lot, lot locations, because some locations they couldn't get to with the 
existing equipment and just put quit putting them lines in a bad location. I know you talked about like on our vehicles and stuff like that. They were kind of purchase some new ones because yes. of our current fleet is starting to deteriorate pretty bad. Yeah, we've got some pretty old vehicles out there. Uh, so last year, last year's budget was there only two vehicles total in the budget to purchase in last year's. And then we just recently approved for. We we just uh, purchased two pickup trucks in that budget year. We had budgeted for those two larger trucks that we just ordered, mm -hmm. but in the most, that size truck is not currently in production. We're having to wait on that, but it's going to fall over in the, the new budget. Is each individual responsible for his own truck, or do we have a kind of a semi-maintenance department, or how do we do this? Yeah, well, she could probably answer a little better than I could. Mm -hmm. Everybody is pretty much assigned to a truck, and, and we kind of leave it up to them to make sure it gets maintained, aren't we? Yeah, uh, yeah, we we keep a schedule on you know oil change. We try to do that around every three thousand miles or you know. Uh, you know, I just bought some stuff, and of course, I know that there's this new synthetic oil that they got. They're talking seven and ten thousand miles right. for changes, and most vehicles anymore are you know two hundred thousand is still pretty good if you do it on the periodic maintenance. Uh, when we say we're getting older vehicles, I just wonder, is it 90,000, 100,000, you know, what, what are we looking at? Well, you know, as far as, as vehicle-wise, you know, ours has just got a lot of miles on them as far as... But I, just because they got a lot of miles on them, I'm getting that doesn't mean they're throwaways. No. It, it's, it's age, miles, running time. A lot, a lot of the times these guys be out on a, a line break or whatever, and the trucks sit there running so they can run their strokes. Uh, and just like we, we just need a good report. You know, when, when you're going and looking at ordering six or eight vehicles, we need to know that we're definitely, uh, that, that the deterioration is definitely way out of whack and we need six vehicles. I mean, uh, right. I just don't, yeah, I mean, I'm not agreeing to buy six vehicles just every time something is just a little ragged or something. But you all haven't ever been on like a sort like a, a replacement program saying we will replace up no. to two vehicles a year and no matter what they are, just go ahead and you determine once they're bad, then you're getting them. Instead well, of trying you to know, as far as any truck we got out there, I mean, you know, 98% uh, of them, I mean, there's, you know, good trucks. I mean, we got two or three out there, it's, you know, it's, Showing their age pretty, you know, pretty good. I mean, <laughs> they have been worked hard. I'm looking at six know. over the year. Uh, uh, but, but we've only got two or three that that's what, what we're here. Mm. He, he, I'm not arguing okay, with that. We'll he, talk about okay. that later, but I'm he, just saying there yeah. needs to be a specific sure. way to determine when. It was when, when, it was when your maintenance do. costs start getting out of hand and so forth. He's talking on, on, on the water distribution side. He's got right. two or yeah, three. Yeah, uh, we've got one at the water plant that. Bad and a couple in the sewer. I understand. I'm just saying we need yeah. to. No, it's not don't just don't a, arbitrarily. No, don't just buy trucks to buy trucks. Right. No. That's what no, I'm saying. No way. I mean, to me, on the proposal, it looks like you've got eight trucks listed. That's that's including those two that we've we've already ordered. And it's, it's probably going to be September before those trucks are available. So they have to go back into this budget. So before any trucks are ordered or anything, you will come back to the board and we'll discuss it. Absolutely. Okay. That'd be fine. Well, I, yeah, I'm sorry. I probably wasn't paying close enough attention. You've got uh, the, possibly the purchase of two trucks in the budget, but they haven't been authorized to be purchased yet. Is that well, the two have? We, we bought two trucks in, in, in the current budget year. We've so got six more of this. But we won't be paying for them until... This new budget. It's going to be after July before we actually receive them. So we bought the two pickup trucks last fall. Uh, it's one for the water side. I think water got one and, uh, and sewer got one. Okay. I mean, I know when you're 
little synopsis you talked about. That's why you transferred those up two trucks were getting after July into this budget. Correct. That's why it's that much higher than yes. originally talked yeah. about. But was that money already in last year's budget? It was in the budget, but we weren't able to get the trucks yet. Okay. So it figures into our cash flow and all for this year, so I put it in. Okay. So we need to vote on adopting the budget? Yep, yep. Uh, I don't have any more questions. Well, payroll for next year. Mm -hmm. Looks like we've increased payroll pro uh, projections of uh, $250,000 know, in payroll increase. Well, that's just that's potential. Uh, that's, 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 is that that, so may, that may happen or may not. Is that taking what our current monthly is and multiply by 12 and then is there additional employees calculated for that? To there, there's that there's a little bit of an additional employee factor, uh, potential increases, just some things that are going to have to be dealt with as we go forward mm -hmm. and I left room in the budget for them. Okay, so that's just to give us a cushion to yes. say we did go ahead and put this there. Um, and also take care of the payroll tax. Um, utilities expenses. I uh, had a question on last year we had budgeted 426000 and now we're only going to budget 275000 It's the water plant. Uh, the old water plant used a tremendous amount of water in, in back flushing and treating the water. And that has pretty much gone away. Okay. That actually also impacts the expense at the sewer plant even to the point of electricity because I don't have to treat all that sludge coming from the water plant. Okay, uh, going on down the line, I had a question on uh, outside services, operational. Mm -hmm. Exactly what is that? that? That's when you we bring somebody into the outside to perform operational expense that we're not equipped to do. Uh, so like boring things out, out of correct, the field. This isn't correct. the uh, additional cost for project expense where we're hiring yeah. engineering. No, it's not project. It, it, this is actually your, okay. your budgeted operational expenses. Okay. Um, license and software. Uh, shouldn't that be pretty much a set number? You know what you have to pay every year and we've only paid a 37% this year? Uh, that, that will be reflected in the next numbers you see. It's, a, it was, it's, it's an annual fee that, that comes in that, that's the bulk of that on, oh, on, so on your building software. There's still another one for uh, yeah. in June we've not paid no. yet. No. Actually, the, the May and June are not reflected in the reports we've got yet. Okay, that's why I've asked that. Yeah. Um, professional service, I guess that's our engineering cost for hiring someone to perform those duties. Yeah, in, engineering, legal, accounting. Audit, not much to kind of audit. All right. Uh, so that's why that was probably, you know, last year y'all proposed 79,000 and next year you're going for 80,000. Yeah. And only 64% of the existing has been used. So that's just in there as a cushion. Yeah, you need, need a little cushion on that one. Okay. Um, we're still. We still got to pay for Snake Branch or Moccasin or whatever. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're still, I guess, waiting to get all the things back from them. You know, how much it's going to cost to do this. Uh, um, down toward the bottom of the line, it's got interest expense. Explain to me what interest expense is. But um, under other expenses? Yeah. Uh, that's your bond interest, uh, your interest on loans like the one we just refinanced. Uh, it's all your, all, your, all your indebtedness. Okay, because I noticed that went down a lot from last year's projection. Yeah, and that, that's primarily because of that refinancing we just did on the core thing. Okay. Uh, Mike, you see anything or question? No. Or, no, no, no. Or you got anything that you 
Now what are the seniors? And the, all the other contribution to the city is that just the inclusion of the tourism thing? Yeah, that, that's the difference there. And of course, this doesn't reflect our possible other uh, repairs needed, like at the current wastewater treatment plant. Or and, uh, right, that would be a separate issue. Okay. And just let you know the personnel on that side is doing research, trying to find different contractors to talk to and get some ideas. So with that new adjustment with the insurance we just did, did you come up with what our new, you're saying we're now going to come up flat, even, or? Switch screens here. So we were going to show up. Yeah, your, your budget for net income would be 56,850 with that change. So now we have a deficit of 56 projected. No, the, that's not your, on here that would be your projected net income. Well, I meant on the other one. Your, ca your cash, for, your cash actual flow. actual total from every all expenses that we've got projected. And that projects a deficit of eighty two five sixty one fourteen. Now, I guess last year's budget. Um, what was the projection on it? That the we cash flow. With? Yeah. I mean, it was. It, 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 it was a positive number. I can have it here in a minute. Well, I mean, if all the other values are about the same, if we just take the difference in those two, then it looks like we would have made that broke even or something. And, and we've got some extraordinary things in, in this capital budget that are that put us in that position. Mm -hmm. I, I don't wouldn't anticipate six trucks every year. So not on my excavator. Mm -hmm.
Entertain a motion to go back into the regular session. Make a motion to go back into the regular session. I second. All in favor? Aye. <laughs> uh, in executive session, uh, the results, uh, we've asked our legal staff and uh, Bob to prepare information to uh, submit for advertisements for the position of a general manager. So we're going to advertise uh, shortly for a general manager. Other than that, that was uh, all that uh, we talked about. We have a motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Meeting's over. I thought we'd be in here longer, especially that time.